Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of pericardial decompression syndrome after large volume pericardiocentesis. The patient is an 85-year-old woman uh, with a remote history of breast cancer. Uh, she was brought in by her daughter for shortness of breath and failure to thrive. Her vitals showed a blood pressure of 95 over 60. Uh, she was tachycardic at 110 and satting 96% on two liters. Her ECG showed uh, diminished voltages and electrical alternance. Her echo, uh, seen here, uh, showed a very large, uh, very impressive uh, circumferential uh, pericardial effusion. And the uh, cath lab was called uh, for pericardiocentesis. The uh, pericardiocentesis was quite straightforward. This effusion was so large uh, that it was hard to miss. Uh, the pericardial space was entered from the uh, sub xiphoid approach on the first pass, and straw-colored fluid uh, was uh, aspirated. Uh, but after evacuating about 500 cc of fluid, uh, there was still uh, quite a large effusion left, and the patient uh, continued to be uh, tachycardic. And even after one liter uh, was evacuated, there was still a large effusion, and the patient uh, remained tachycardic. Uh, eventually, uh, 2.1 liters of fluid uh, was uh, evacuated, uh, quite a large volume. Uh, there was a minimal uh, residual effusion after this, and a pericardial drain uh, was placed. The uh, patient appeared better. Uh, her heart rate had decreased. Her blood pressure had improved, and uh, she was moved to the ICU for uh, observation. The patient did well uh, for most of the day in the ICU. There was minimal additional drainage uh, from the pericardial drain. Uh, but overnight, uh, she uh, began to decompensate. Uh, she developed uh, increasing dyspnea, increasing work of breathing. Uh, she had bilateral rows halfway up her lung fields. Uh, she became hypotensive and tachycardic again and had an increasing oxygen uh, requirement. The ECG showed uh, no ischemic changes. Um, had she reaccumulated fluid, had we somehow perforated the RV and caused a, so, uh, a slow leak? Uh, thankfully, no. Uh, the uh, limited echo then at bedside showed uh, no uh, pericardial effusion. However, the RV did appear to be quite enlarged and hypokinetic, and the uh, left ventricular uh, EF um, was on the low end of normal. Did she end up with a PE? Nope. Uh, the uh, chest CTA done a little bit later, showed no evidence of pulmonary embolus, but did also show uh, an enlarged uh, right ventricle as well as pulmonary edema. So what happened? Uh, we think uh, that this was a case of uh, pericardial decompression syndrome, or PDS, which is a paradoxical hemodynamic decompensation uh, after pericardiocentesis. Uh, the syndrome is more often seen after large volume pericardiocentesis, more than one liter, uh, but there are case reports of PDS after less than 500 cc's of fluid evacuated. The syndrome can happen anytime from right after the procedure to up to 48 hours later, and generally patients develop symptoms of acute decompensated left heart failure, uh, dyspnea, uh, pulmonary edema, hypotension, and even cardiogenic shock. And on echo, you'll sometimes see a reduction in the left ventricular uh, EF, as well as concomitant uh, RV enlargement and dysfunction. Um, treatment is supportive, uh, diuretics, inotropes, uh, mechanical circular to support balloon pumps. And generally, you'll see uh, improvement um, after uh, a few days of support. So how can this happen? How in the world uh, can pericardiocentesis actually cause uh, left heart failure and hemodynamic uh, decompensation? Well, the mechanism of pericardial decompression syndrome is not really known. Uh, one common explanation is as follows. Um, after large volume pericardiocentesis, um, the pericardial pressure is quickly relieved, uh, so you get a rapid and large increase in venous return. This then leads to the right ventricle suddenly enlarging, a process that's also helped along by the rapid um, decompression of the RV uh, from evacuating all of the pericardial fluid. So you end up with both RV volume overload and dysfunction, as well as compression of the left ventricle uh, from the uh, suddenly enlarged RV. You'll see septal bowing uh, uh, into the LV. This then causes the cardiac output to fall, uh, which results in pulmonary edema and hemodynamic uh, decompensation. But um, as the mechanism isn't completely clear, the prevention strategies aren't clear either. There is no uh, solid evidence-based data. 
the uh, 2004 European guidelines do suggest evacuating not more than one liter of fluid in one sitting, but that recommendation is only based on one very small case series of three patients. And there are case reports of pericardial decompression syndrome with less than 500 cc's of fluid evacuated. Another approach is to remove just enough uh, fluid to alleviate tamponade and then leave a pericardial drain to slowly remove the remainder of the fluid. But again, this suggestion is based less on data and more on just um, expert opinion. So uh, back to our patient. Um, fortunately, she did better uh, with just uh, intravenous diuretics. Uh, she did not uh, require inotropes oppressors or a balloon pump. And a full echo the next day, uh, seen here, showed uh, no residual effusion, uh, but did show a markedly enlarged right ventricle. Her LVEF uh, was normal. Uh, the rest of her hospitalization was fairly benign. Uh, she developed some mild acute kidney injury, but otherwise did well and was discharged uh, three days later. All right, so uh, take home messages. Um, Consider pericardial decompression syndrome. If you have a patient that develops evidence of left heart failure within 48 hours of uh, pericardial synthesis, especially after a large volume pericardial synthesis. The mechanism is not clear, uh, but may be related to a rapid rise in venous return causing RV overload and LV uh, compression. The treatment is supportive, diuretics, inotrope suppressors, uh, mechanical circulatory support. And uh, patients generally recover uh, after a few days. There is uh, no solid evidence-based data for prevention, uh, though some have argued for a limited volume pericardial synthesis uh, followed by slow evacuation of the residual fl uh, fluid uh, using a, a pericardial drain. Thank you for watching.